welcome to the next lecture series on electric power system so lecture number 26 to 32 we are going to discuss on power system modeling so the lecture will be divided as such in lecture number 26 we will discuss on single line diagram then lecture number 27 per unit quantities and system 28 we are going to discuss impedance and reactance diagram 29 formation of bus admittance matrix and 30 formation of bus impedance matrix 31 lecture will be dealing with the symmetrical components and 32 will be on sequence impedance and sequence network so this all together will form the power system modeling topics today's lecture we were going to discuss on single line diagram so let us see how do we represent a power system so a typical power system will consist of a three phase grid to which all generating stations feed synergy and from which all substation taps energy. It means a grid where the generating station will be delivering the energy and all substations will be taking the energy from the grid. So this is your grid and this is your uh, grid. So here you have the generating stations and here you have the substations. Generating stations are delivering the energy, uh, giving the energy and substations are tapping the energy. So what is the grid is all about? So grid is basically a three phase single or double circuit transmission line that is running throughout the length and breadth of a country or a state. So the grid are basically three phase. So they can be single circuit or double circuit. Now the components of power system. So what, how many components can be used in power system? So the component that is used to produce the electrical energy are the generating stations or the alternators. Then we can increase the level of the voltage using a power transformer. Then energy are being transmitted from one distance to another using a transmission lines. Then you have a substation or substation transformer. Then you have a distribution transformer and the loads. Loads can be of various categories, whether it can be synchronous motor, induction motor, lightning, etc. Now, these components, whichever are used in the power system and their interconnection are usually represented by a single line diagram. Single line diagram are also known as one line diagram. So all these components and their interconnection will be represented using a single line diagram. So in single line diagram, the components are represented by standard symbols. So all these components will have some standard symbols that we have to know and their interconnections are shown by a single line even though they are three phase circuits. So whether you are dealing with three phase circuit or single phase circuit, there will be only one single line and all these components will have a standard symbol. So let us see what is a single line diagram in detail. The other name is one line diagram. So it is a balanced three phase system always analyzed on per phase basis. So as we are seeing in the power system course, Whenever you have a three phase system which is a balance in nature, we can analyze in per phase basis by considering any one of the three phase line and the neutral. So you can have three lines and one neutral. So this is your neutral, this is your three lines R, Y and B. So you can take any of the one line and the neutral to form a single phase circuit and all the single line diagram will be represented on per phase basis. So it is enough if we show one phase and neutral in the diagrammatic representation of power system. So only one phase is being shown out of the three phase and the system is balanced. The diagram is further simplified by omitting the neutral. So neutral can be omitted from the circuit to form the resultant diagram will be the single line diagram. So the definition of a single line diagram is it is a diagrammatic representation of power system in which the components are represented by their symbols 
and the interconnection between them are shown by straight lines. So whatever components we have in power system, they will be represented with some special symbol and they will be interconnected with the straight lines and this total diagrammatic representation is known as the single line diagram. So besides the symbols, the rating and the impedance of the component are also marked. So whatever the component we are using, the rating of that will be represented beside their symbol. The purpose of single line diagram is to supply in concise form the significant information about the system. A power system can be many complex in nature and the purpose of single line diagram is to for, uh, supply you the concise form significant information about the system. So what are the symbols that are being used in for the single line diagram? So the first important symbol is for a transformer. So as we know that in a transformer you will have a primary circuit and a secondary circuit. So they will be represented in the form of two inductor. So these two inductors will represent a uh, symbol for the transformer. And well, how the primary and secondary circuits are connected that will be represented in the form of star delta or if it is star grounded then it will be represented in this form and or star star. So if you have a generator or a motor it will be represented with a circle written G or B. The bus will be represented with a thick line either horizontally or vertically. If you have a circuit breaker, it will be represented by a rectangle. The load will represent with a bigger rectangle. The other few symbols are also there. So if you have any measuring instrument, whether it is ammeter, it will be represented by A. And this format will be represented with whether the contact is open or closed. There are other few symbols which are often used for which we have to know that. So basically these are few important symbols that will be used always to represent a single line diagram. We will be taking motor or a generator. So G stands for generator, M stands for motor. A transformer can be represented by two inductor or it can be represented with circles. If you have two circles then it is a single phase transformer. If you have a three circles then there is a tertiary winding involved with the transformer. Bus can be represented by a horizontal or a vertical line. The load will be represented by an arrow. The air circuit breaker will be represented by an arc. Oil circuit breaker small rectangle. This is the connecting lines and star and delta connected transformer or the load will be represented in the star and delta fashion. So a typical uh, single line diagram looks like this. So this is one of the example of a typical single line diagram. So we can see that the thick lines here represent the bus 1, bus 2 and bus 3 and bus 4. So that there are basically 4 buses. And the generator which is star grounded in nature is supplying the energy to bus 1. And through this circuit breaker a transformer is connected with bus 1. Through this circuit breaker a transformer secondary is connected to bus 2. So transformer primary is connected with the bus 1, transformer secondary is connected with bus 2. Now this is a transmission line through which the energy is transmitted from bus 2 to bus 3. Now transformer T2 primary is connected to bus 3 and secondary is connected to bus 4 and bus 4 uh, is giving to some load. So we are going from left to right to analyze the complete single line diagram. Now, how do we construct the single line diagram? You should have appropriate symbols for all the component. You have to draw the required system by interconnecting of all the equipments shown in the form of a symbol. And then you have to know the per unit values of the ratings of each impedance which is there in the power system representation of single line diagram. Now, what is per unit value that we are going to see in the next lecture. So here we can see that a single line diagram of a 66 by 6.6 .6 kV substation. So here we can see that the entire substation is represented with a single line diagram with too many components with the 
symbols and their ratings uh, written after uh, besides them so we can see that the single line diagram is providing adequate information about the whole system so this completes the single line diagram and in the next class we are going to discuss the power unit system thank you